Alright, alright, alright. Welcome to the JB Rambo Show. I am your host, JB Rambo. And today, I totally scooped the hooch. I had a uh, intro already, but I see with this software, you got to make sure that you set it up. Because once I push the little button, I end up turning off the recording. And rather than have to piece it all back together, I just said, man, screw it. I'm just going to start all over and do my intro again. So anyway, I was talking about, uh, I was getting ready to talk about how I woke up late again today. So I set my alarm clock for 3 a.m. because that's the light, that's the time I want to get started. And I hit that snooze button multiple times today. So, oh, man, I just feel like a, a real a real waster or lack slacker, you know. And, you know, I'm not trying to be too hard on myself. It's just I really want to get myself up at 3 because I feel like when I, when I, when I feel like I overcome – that voice in my head that tells me, hey, man, just go back to sleep. It's nice and cozy and warm in here. Why do you want to go out and run? Especially in a white T-shirt with some shorts on. It's freezing cold outside. Just stay here. Come on, Dre. Just stay right here. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I listened to that voice a little bit. And I ended up sleeping in until 3.20. I finally kicked myself up out of bed at 3.20. I got, and then, and then I go outside of the dryer, which I put my clothes in to the dryer last night to get warm, to get dried. Turns out they're still wet. So I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? That's all I got. I got this white t-shirt. And I thought to myself, you know what? Challenge. You know, my daughter always tells me, let's do a challenge. And, you know, it's funny when you're a little kid, you have those, uh, you still have that sense of like, we could do anything. We could do anything we want to do. And let's, let's challenge ourselves. And usually, usually it's not until life beats you down that you stop having that zest for life where you just want to challenge yourself. And so I thought today, you know what, old man, I'm not even that old, but I'm like, you know what, guy, man, we're going to. Let's challenge ourselves today. We're going to run in a, you know, just a white t-shirt and some shorts, obviously with some shoes and some low cut socks. And I did everything I possibly could to put myself in a position where I had to get outside my comfort zone. I mean, to be honest with you, running is already outside of my comfort zone. I hate running and that's why I do it every day. It, I, I like to, I like the challenge of running, but I hate the actual process of going through it. It's only three and a half miles that I run around my house real quick, but I hate doing it. And the funny thing is, is that it's only three and a half miles. So I've done three and a half miles before. Last year I was doing uh, three and a half miles. I wasn't waking up at 3 a.m. to go run three and a half miles. You know, I would just do it some randomly during the day, random. And, you know, my best time was probably like, 32 minutes or something like that i was it wasn't fast but i mean if you think about it that's that's pretty slow that's like just barely under 10 minutes right but lately especially over the last month i've been running it in like 50 minutes 50 so that means that i'm literally running like 15 minute miles <laughs> but it's okay I, I told myself you know it's all right because you're running at least you're doing it. And I'm like dragging my feet out there. I, I got some new uh, Nikes. And I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't like these particular shoes. They're not very comfortable for me, but I bought them. And they already have, a, a, you know, scrape scuff marks on the bottom where the soles are, or whatever you call that bottom part, is already scraped off because I dragged my feet so much. But I'm running these 15 minute miles and I'm thinking to myself, Man, you are slow, but at least you're you're going and you're not stopping. You're you're running, you're not walking, and you're not stopping, and you're and you're doing it. And you know we gotta recognize the small victories because, I mean, shoot, you don't want to beat yourself down to the point where you just discourage yourself, right? So I'm trying to look for the positive in the whole thing. 
because as I'm freezing my butt off out there and I'm running and I'm just doing it, um, I have all these thoughts going to my head like, why am I, why are you doing this? Why? Why? And it, it's a really cool process because you get a, a real chance to get into your thoughts. What I stopped doing is I stopped putting my headphones on because when I first started running, I would put my headphones on and I would have those uh, motivational guys uh, it could be anybody. It could be David Goggins or, or was that guy uh, uh, Rocco? Really, oh, what's that guy's name? Why is my memory so bad? Jocko Willink and uh, you know other motivational guys. You gotta get up in the morning. You gotta be the first one up. You gotta go out there and dig deep inside yourself. And I'll listen to that stuff, and while I'm running, and you know it has its uses. You know what I mean? Like I like to listen to it. And uh, because sometimes you you just need somebody to tell you to wake up, get up and get out there and do what you got to do. And, you know, I I enjoy that. But, you know, I I started thinking to myself, you know what, man, you are you're getting busier and busier. And one thing that you do not want to let go of is your prayer and time with God, because your prayer and time with God, man, you need that. That's when he's talking to you. That's when he's trying to tell you about, you know, wants to hear about what's going to go on in your day. He wants to tell you about what he wants you to do with your day. And he wants to give you some revelation so that you can go out there and uh, do his work, and do his bidding for him. And so I, over the last couple of days, decided, you know what, I'm not going to. Actually, it was because I didn't do my laundry and I didn't have nowhere to put my uh, my cell phone and all that. And I just said, you know what, I'm just forget about it. I'm just going to get out there and run. And then I realized, hey, you know what? I actually felt, this was yesterday, I felt like, you know, I actually felt like I was in prayer, like I was communicating with God. And then so more so today when I was running, you know, I was uh, talking to Jesus, talking to the Father. Mainly I talked to the Father and to the Holy Spirit. And I, you know, I'm just telling him about stuff and things that I'm hoping that he'll do for me, and I'm hoping that he's listening. Now, when I pray and I and I say, you know, I, I hope that he'll do things for me. I'm not looking at him like he's a genie in a bottle, you know. I I, I admit I I used to do that, of course. God, give me this. God, I want this. God, I want that. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. You know, if you're something you want in your life, who better to go and ask than the father, right? Because, you know, just like you would with your earthly father or your or your parent or whoever's whoever's taking care of you, you know, you're going to ask them for stuff, especially when you're young and you rely on them. Right. But with your heavenly father, you always rely on him. So that's OK. You want to ask for riches and power or whatever it is that you're looking for. You want to ask the father, go for it. But I find myself asking God to change certain things about me. You know, certain certain things that I want to change about myself. And, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, yesterday I was thinking about it. There is things we want to become or like things that we that we want to be, we want to grow up and be something like a doctor or a lawyer or a, a gymnast or a jujitsu badass like me. Or, you know, something, you know, there's always something we want to become. And I was thinking about more on the along the lines of, you know, something I want to, some, who do I want to be? Like, what kind of a person do I want to be? And when I'm praying to, to the Father and I'm asking him for stuff, I find myself often asking him to make me a certain type of someone, uh, to, for example, today I was asking him, you know, to make, I always ask him to make me a good person because I want to be a good person. I want to be without sin. You know, this morning on my run, I'm asking God, you know, please take all this sin away from me. I don't want to be a sinner. Of course, I'm, I'm always going to be a sinner until he makes me complete when I'm in, when I'm one day when I'm in heaven. But I ask him to to change certain things about me. Like, I, like for example, I want, you know, Father, I want to be uh, someone that my wife and kids can rely on. I want to be someone that they look up to. Make me someone that they could look up to. 
And then I ask him for what is that, Father? You know, what is it that my wife and kids, what is it that I need to do? What do I need to change about myself to be someone that my family would want to look up to me, right? Uh, or I ask them, you know, God, I want to be somebody that people like my friends that they can rely on. You know, I want I want, when 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 Dre says he's gonna do something. I want to be the kind of guy that when when I when Dre says he does says he's gonna do something, people, you know, don't doubt that. Oh, Dre said he's gonna uh, help me uh, move a move a fridge on the weekend. I don't gotta worry about it, even though I asked him last week. I don't have to remind him. He knows when I need him. He knows. I told him I need to do it this Saturday at twelve o'clock, and I have no doubts in my mind. I know Dre; he will be here. I don't have to remind him because I know that's that's the kind of thing I ask God for when I'm doing my runs, you know, to make me a a better human being. And I and so, you know, those are the types of things that I, that you know I ask the Father for. But you could ask God for anything. You know, God will, God says, uh, you know, he wants you to, he wants you to take your concerns and the things that you want to him. And that's okay. So anyhow, so I get on this, I get on this run today and I'm freezing cold. And by the time I get home, I have work to do. I, I have actual legal doc guy work, you know. And today, you know, I don't know about you guys, but there's just times when I just, I don't want to do something. And, but there's times when you know that you have to do it. For example, you know, I have legal doc guy stuff where people are relying on you, relying on you to get their, their court papers done and whatnot. And the last thing you want to do is let them down because, you know, that's it. They maybe have something really important that they need. They need have an emergency. You know, there's something called an ex parte, which is an emergency hearing where you're requesting that the court deal with an issue uh, because there's an emergency and, you, and they need the court to make some type of a ruling. And sometimes it could be life or death, uh, literally. And sometimes it it could be very costly for other types of people. It could be it could be something that. They need a ruling right now because it could cost them lots of money. Um, you know, the stakes are high type of thing. And so today I, you know, I worked on that. It was about, by the time I got home from my run, it must have been about, uh, see, I actually started running around 3.30. I think I got back or almost at 4.30. That's how slow I am. And then I worked on my legal doc guy stuff and I, uh, Got that finished up right before I started the show, which was about 5.50. Uh, why I bring this up? Uh, just because I like to, you know, talk into the mic and force people to listen to me and my singing. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, anyway, so I got to get, I got other things that I have to do too as well today. For example, I still got to go to work and it's 6.15 in the morning. And I'm drinking hot water with lemon in it. I'm staying true to my word so far. I was able to not drink coffee yesterday. And you could see how steady my hand is. I'm like a rock. Nothing can shake me. Nothing can move me. Look how steady my hands are. See that? That's only after one day of not drinking coffee. That's how... Badass I am. Okay. So normally I go to Starbucks and I'll drink, uh, I'll get myself what's called a venti cafe misto. And that's just a coffee with steamed milk. It's really not that big of a deal. But I started uh, realizing that the coffee wasn't good for me just because the way it made me feel. Especially it made me go to the bathroom a lot, like to urinate. And, you know, I'm probably diabetic from all the years of destroying my body with alcohol and drugs. And so I, I, I as a 45-year-old, I got to really watch what I put into my body. It's funny. You know, I, I, I see all the young guys, young friends that I have from jiu-jitsu or other places. Uh, uh, not just jiu-jitsu, but other places as well. So I just want to 
put my only my jujitsu guys out there. But I see people uh, drinking, having a good time, which is fine. You know, you know, more power to you. Uh, and I go places and I see all the, the, the drinking, especially the drinking and the smoking of the pot, you know, the little bit of poo, 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 and a little bit of, and I think to myself, first of all, I don't miss it anymore at all. I don't miss smoking pot or drinking beer or any of that stuff. Right. Uh, thank God for that. Thank God that he took that urge away from me and he answered my prayer. Finally, he's such a. He's such a giving God and put so much grace on me. Point is, I see all these people out there, you know, drinking and smoking the, the pot and all that and all those things, smoking cigarettes or vaping. I see it all, all the time. And they're young. And I think to myself, man, if you guys only knew what I am experiencing right now as a 45-year-old, I'm not even old. But, man, I put my body through the ringer big time. And... The way my body, the certain things I have, you know, going on up in here. I know it's because of the alcohol and the drugs, you know, the diabetes, all that crap. I probably have diabetes. I'm not diagnosed with diabetes, but I'm sure I got it. I'm sure I got the beads. And uh, it's all because I didn't take care of myself. And you got to take care of yourself, you know. We only have so much time on this earth. And it's significantly shortened with all of the alcohol and drinking, it catches up with you. Uh, it's funny, when I was 25, 26, somebody had said that to me once, it's going to catch up to you. And I was like, eh, because you're young. What do you care? You're young. And young and dumb. And, but it does catch up with you. You know, smoking, drinking, all that stuff catches up with you. And, and, and look at me now. I'm 45 years old, trying to win some of it back. I'm trying to get some of that back. And, I'm not going to pull it up, but there's an amazing verse in the Bible that talks about how God will give you some of your time back. You know, I'm going to look at that verse because um, it's basically, and don't quote me on this, and God, I'm sorry if I get it wrong, but he's basically saying, you know, you're going to go through all this stuff, you know, in your life and whatnot, and one day you're going to bow down to me and you're going to you're going to make me number one in your life again. And it's going to be for his glory. And he promises to give you some of your some of your time back, some of what you've lost because of your faithfulness and, and your willingness to, to make the changes that are necessary in your life. I believe strongly, and, I, and it's not necessarily biblically sound, but I trust God a lot, and I... I have a hope in him and a trust and faith in him that by me waking up early in the morning and going running, if I can if I can stop with the donuts and the eating of the candy and, and the chocolate and the coffee and do these things for his glory, if I can do some of that, he will give me some extra time on this earth. And I got to tell you, I need some extra time on this earth because I still have young ones. I still got three little kids that I got to get to at least adulthood, to adulthood. And, you know, if you're a parent, you understand what, I, what I'm talking about, that our kids rely on us. And the last thing you want to do is die on your kid. It's, it's not as bad as losing a child. I, I can only imagine. I mean, I've... I've lost children, but not through to, to, to death. But you know, dying young on your and dying, leaving a child behind to fend for themselves, man, that's a that's one of my one of my fears in life. And I wish I could tell you I'm the bravest guy in the world, and I don't have no fears, but I do. I have fears when they, especially when they come to my kids, and you know. That's why we got to take care of ourselves. You got kids, you got you got to take care of yourself. Make sure that you're here for them for years to come because they're going to rely on you. Even in, when they're adults, they're going to rely on you. And uh, so that's why we got to take care of ourselves and make sure that we're making good decisions. And making good decisions got to start when you're young. 
Because the whole thing is a lie. It's a lie. All those Bud Light commercials or all those whatever beer commercials or your or your friends who tell you all oh, weed is naturally grown. It's it's from the earth. It's it's good for you. It doesn't. I mean, it may help some people who are dying of cancer and stuff. I'm not saying I'm not knocking you know it. I'm not knocking pot completely. But everything's a lie. Every, everything's going to harm you. Everything's harming you. You know, it's all designed. Everything in this world is designed to harm you. And we have to protect ourselves. Not just because it, it harms us physically, but a lot of this stuff harms us in here. People don't realize it, but sin is very destructive. Anything that Anything that you're doing that is not just sinful but anything that i mean it just falls in that to that category you know if you're drinking alcohol excessively and you're getting going out every night and getting drunk which i've done which i have done i did it for years and i never looked at it as as i was sinning but that's exactly what i was doing i was committing a sin the bible says very clearly that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of god now, what does that mean? I don't think, it, I don't know if it necessarily means you ain't going to heaven. I think you are going to go to heaven. You believe in Jesus Christ. If you say with the words coming out of your mouth that he is your Lord and Savior and that you're going to give your life to him, I believe you're saved. That's, that's God's grace on you because it's not, nothing you can do is going to get you to heaven. Only Jesus, through the blood of Jesus Christ, can you get to heaven. And that's the only way. But that being said, God doesn't want us to sin. Why? I don't think it's necessarily that he's going to throw you in the pits of hell. I mean, he could. He could do anything he wants. God can save anybody he wants. He decides who he's going to let into the, his kingdom, right? He decides. But I think that he wants to protect us from our sin. Why? Because it's un- it hurts us. It harms us. He wants what's good for us. He wants us to have good lives. He doesn't want us to self-destruct and to be or to be miserable and start developing problems with our life. He wants you to overcome those things, draw near to him. And it's difficult to draw near to the father when we are living in sin. And not only that, but sin, whatever it is, whatever, whatever is, whatever it is that's making you uh, uh, feel sad or bad or angry or, or not happy or not feeling, experiencing joy in your life, whatever that is, that he wants to keep you from that. To, to you know, for me, it was alcohol and, and pot. I'm sure it was pot. It took me a long time to accept that, but for the most part, it was alcohol. And I would drink every night. Every night, especially before, especially before I started jujitsu, I was so miserable and unhappy that I would go walk down to the liquor store. And I'm talking even as a young kid, too, even as a 15, 18, 20, 25, 30, 35. I started jujitsu when I was 38 years old and I quit drinking for the first time on that day, 38 years old, my 38th birthday. That was the same day I started jujitsu. I was drinking alcohol all that time, and I was miserable. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of reasons why. I'm sure Dr. Phil can figure that out. But I had all these, all this brokenness and all these feelings of despair, and the alcohol was just adding to that. I bought into the big lie that if I just drink alcohol, that I'm going to experience joy. I'm going to be that guy on the beach laughing it up with a bunch of bikini models just and all my buddies just living a great life, having fun, enjoying, and experiencing a good life. But for me, in my case, it was a big, big lie. Not to say that there was never instances of, you know, when I would have debauchery and have laughter and, you know, or be at a beach and having fun with people, but... For the most part, it was always just a very sad, sad, sad experience. I wasted much of my life. I wasted so much of my life under the sauce, 
under the bottle of alcohol. And I wish that I would have made a better decisions, better choices. I wish that there would have been a big brother there to tell me, hey, man, there's a better way to live. You know, let me take you under my wing. Let me something. Anybody. Anybody. But there wasn't. And even if there was, I wasn't willing to listen. I wasn't. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't understand. There, there was no. I felt I got acceptance from the bottle. I, I, I solved my problems of loneliness and despair with a bottle. And so I, I hope you know the one thing that can fill that goal, that, that, that hole and that gap, whatever's happening in your life, whatever it is, the one person who you can always count on that loves you is Jesus Christ because he died on the cross for you. He took, a, he took all that, what was going on in you, all that, the sin, the despair, and he went to the cross for you. He did that. He did it for me. And until I realized that, until I realized what he had done, I was not able to, the Lord was not able to work in me. And now that I have, I have full-blown faith, is, is, can my faith be shaken? Am I, do I still deal with uh, temptations, not from God, but from the devil? Am I still face challenges? Absolutely. My life has not gotten any easier. That's, that's, that's another lie. Your life doesn't get easier. It's just about what I was talking about yesterday. You become, you become stronger. You have, the, you have the power of the Holy Spirit behind you. You're, you're stronger. You're able to deal with life's problems. You're going to change the way you think. God's going to do a new thing in you. He's going to change you. You just got to believe that that's possible. And it is because I'm experiencing it right now. You know, one of the craziest things uh, that I ever saw from a believer, I have this uncle. And I hardly ever see him. I did run into him recently. His name's Uncle Mike. What's up, Uncle Mike? So Uncle Mike's not my blood uncle, but he's married to my blood aunt. Uh, and her name's Donna. And... These guys, when I was growing up, I mean, these are the last people I thought would ever find Jesus, you know. Not that I was thinking about it at, 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 during those years because I was just a young kid. But I remember all the debauchery and the fighting and the, just the unhealthy environment, all that. And it's, it's, it's gone. It, it was bad. And then I remember one day this guy found Jesus. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, this guy, this guy found Jesus, come on, right? And, and I remember, as the years went by, I remember I, I developed a respect for that guy. He was the kind of guy, man, he would just talk your ear off. I mean, he did not stop talking, not even just about Jesus. I mean, even before that, he was just a guy who talked a lot. Like, there was, I always thought there was something not right about him. He just talked, he talked, he talked. And then this guy finds Jesus, and you you could tell he was a changed person. And I remember I developed a, a real genuine respect for this guy, even though I never wanted to hear about his Jesus stuff. But I remember thinking, man, it, if Jesus can change that guy, if he can do what he has done to that guy, the guy who who was doing this and bad thing and this bad thing and that bad thing then he could change anybody straight up if he could change that guy he could change anybody he could change you if he could change me he could change you i don't know if i was as bad as my uncle mike but but i was pretty bad i mean you know what man to be honest with you i may i may have been worse than my uncle mike because you know, it's, we don't, it's hard for us to really look at ourselves and, and to think about ourselves as that way. We always think we're so great and we always think we're, we're, we don't have any problems. But the truth is, we're, we're usually the most broken people. I'm a broken guy. I'm still broken. I, I, I'm so broken, I need, I need the power of God. 
I need actually need God to help me because I'm so broken and just so messed up. But that's the beauty of it all. You know, Jesus came here to to save and to help those who need him. He's not here for the for the guys and girls who got their all their lives together and they never think about, oh, my life is so great. You know, the people who like to sit up in the front and they got all their, you know, they got their life, they, they got everything together. You know, he, he's here. He's here. I mean, he's here for everybody, but I mean, he's here for you too, the broken. You know, the, the guy or girl who, who who can't get it together, the the ones that people want to shun away whenever they run or pass by you on the street. You know, he's here for everybody. So anyway, I love my Uncle Mike. He's a good guy. And uh, you know, I should probably call that guy for lunch. That's another thing. You know, I, the, the funny thing about being sober and, 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 and having, uh, you know, a relationship with God and, and being able to, you know, the changes that start to happen in you is you start realizing that you're more, that you're, you're absolutely more and capable of more than you ever were in the past. I never, I, I avoided people. Like the plague, anywhere I would go, I, I didn't want to be around you unless you were drinking and getting wasted like me. Like if you were, you know, there are some people who could drink casually. I used to hate being around people that they could have just one or two beers and and then just have a nice time talking to one another and all that. I, I didn't want to be around those people. I wanted to be around other people who just wanted to get wasted. If you didn't want to get wasted, I didn't want to be around you. Because I was only looking for somebody who just, or to hang out with somebody who just wanted to get wasted and drink beer after beer after beer after beer to the point where we're just so drunk and we're just laughing and whatever because we're just so out of it, you know. But, you know, that's not living, right? And so I forgot what my point was, but that's okay because it's my show and I could just ramble all I want. Um Pretty soon I'm going to be opening up the phone lines. I know I mentioned that before. I got to, you know, set up a Google phone number. I do have a phone number uh, on here. It's kind of cool. Like, I'll show it to you guys real quick. I don't want to show it because my, my account's public. And, you know, then the next thing you know, I'm going to have random people calling my cell phone. And I just can't have that. Um, but as soon as I get off my butt, I'm going to create a Google account. And then I'm going to try to set up a time where people can call in and then you could be on my show and you could ask questions, you could uh, whatever you want. Hopefully you don't cuss me out because it it will be recorded and I am going to post it regardless. So I hope you don't do that. I don't have to, I don't have to sit here and start editing you guys, editing out all your cuss words and putting the little beep and all that. But I do want to open up the phone line so that people can get, uh, you know, just to make it fun. And, you know, I'm kind of like a, kind of like a counselor. Like if you're, if you're crazy enough to ask me for advice, I'm crazy enough to give you some. But disclaimer, you know, take it with a grain of salt because I'm a bonehead and you don't want to, you know, you come asking me about something, I'm going to give you an answer. But whether or not the answer is going to be good for you, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, but pretty soon I will be opening it up and you guys will be able to call me and, you know, you could be on the air because we're going YouTube famous, y'all. And pretty soon this, this channel is going to blow up. And I really believe that. I really believe that the more I sit on this microphone and talking to the camera and get comfortable with it and just rambling on my mouth, you know, you're going to get better. I do have this thing like brain fog. Uh, it could be from the years of drinking. It could be from maybe my brain's messed up. Not necessarily from drinking or drugs or stuff. But people don't realize it. But your brain sometimes goes through some changes. You know, I was listening to this doctor talk about uh, brain images and brain scans and studying those brain scans and just people don't realize it, but there's deterioration and things going on in your brain that we don't even recognize. Like on the outside, I look handsome and beautiful, but on the inside, my brain could be like a shriveled up orange, you know, like a rotten orange inside. So you just don't know. You know, you see somebody looks like me. And then you don't even realize it, but the guy's he's not working with all his screws, you know. So if you take advice from me, that's on you. All right, guys. Well, I got it's like 
I've been recording for now for like 35 minutes, and I think we got enough in here for today. And because I have a lot to do, and you know, I'm I, I don't want to hold you guys up. So anyway, we're gonna start heading out. I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna get this going. We're going, we're going YouTube famous, guys. All right, so drop a like and a share. What are they, as they say, uh, share, like, and subscribe. Yeah, subscribe, guys. Subscribe to my channel. I mean, you're just subscribing. You don't, you're going to watch it. And if, you know, watch it to the end. Don't watch it to the end. Uh, tell your friends about it. Tell your friends about me. All right, guys. Love you all. Hope you guys have a nice day. Just make sure you always stay holy. All right, guys. Peace.